Oh, welcome to part two of the Excel for Data Analysis series. If you are completely new to Excel, watch part one first, which will be linked somewhere at the top here. Data analysis is the process of converting raw numbers into business insights. Raw numbers almost never come in a clean, usable format, so you always have to make sense of what you're working with first. There's a saying in data analysis that 80% of the work is understanding and cleaning the data, and only 20% of the work is analysis. In this video, we will talk about exploratory data analysis, then we'll go into cleaning the data, we'll bring everything together, and then we'll use pivot tables to build some business insights. The good thing is that the logic to analyze the data almost always remains the same, but the methods change from platform to platform. Honestly, if we're using Excel to analyze our data, the data is probably manageable because for larger, more complex data sets, Python, SQL are more efficient. But like I've mentioned, major industries like consulting, finance still rely heavily on Excel. So it's very good to understand how to analyze data in Excel. Before we move on to my laptop, I do want to say a big thank you to everyone who emailed and commented asking for classes and courses. You are making me feel smarter than I actually am. So <laughs> thank you so much for that. I did consider creating a course and I was thinking either Skillshare or Teachable as the first platform. I'm leaning towards Skillshare a little bit more because I'm a user myself, so it might be easier to create a course on that. I haven't created the outline yet. I don't know what the timeline is. So add your questions in the comment box below to let me know what I can consider adding in the course. If I do decide to move forward with it, I will post on the community tab to get some questions and ideas from you guys. All right, so enough with the intro. Timestamps will be in the description box below. Now let's move to my laptop. So let's look at a few questions. We have customer data, so I can think about where would I want to expand my business. I have product information and in the order tab, I have whether the item was returned or not. So I can think about which products are performing best. I also have the amount and in product, I have the unit price, which means I can calculate my revenue. And I also have the date when it was ordered. So I can think about what's my monthly revenue trend. So pick the question that applies most to your work or whatever you're interested in, but before starting anything you need to have a problem statement so that you know what you would be working towards okay so the first step in analyzing data is doing the exploratory data analysis and this just means that we're exploring what we have we're not going to be doing any cleaning we won't be applying any functions or formulas we just want to get an idea of where we are at so looking at the column headers i have the order id i have a product id which means that i would have a product tab which is correct i do i have a customer id and again this must be linking to another customer tab so i have a customer tab i have the amount which is a number um i know whether an item was returned or not and i have the date which means that i can also do some time series analysis in the product tab i have the name and unit price which is amazing because that means i can calculate my revenue and customer data, as the name suggests, is, a, is just customer information. So these are the people that have bought our products and we know where they live. Okay, so I'm just going to quickly put in a few filters, see if we have any blanks in the data, if there's anything that we might want to clean. Um, for filters, like I mentioned in part one, I always want to select the full sheet and I will click on filter. I'm quickly going to see if this data requires any cleaning. Uh, we do actually and this is weird because we have a yes in this column even though this column should just be numbers because this is the amount and we also have some blanks so we might want to deal with that as well customer id also okay has a blank so maybe there are some blank rows in my data set i got an idea about that another possible and very common data entry issue can be adding duplicates so i can select the columns and then under home check out conditional formatting if there are duplicate values i do have some duplicates we have two entries of white whiteboards and one is for a hundred dollars and the other is for 150 which is weird because it should be the same price but i noticed that the product id is different so maybe we increase the price later and we assigned a new product id to it so that means this is fine the monitor stand here looks like a duplicate to select the entire row i'm just doing shift and space these two are duplicates i'm not going to delete anything right now because i'm just in the eda phase um and then under customer data i'm just going to see if there are any duplicates here as well We've identified a few cleaning issues. I also want to check for some outliers quickly. So I'm going to look into the amount. It seems like 
normally our customers buy between one to five products but there is one customer that has bought 45 which is a lot i wonder if that was a mistake so customer seven honestly i don't really like how the filters work in a macbook so out of curiosity i'm just going to look at the buying habits of customer seven and it seems like they're buying a lot so clearly this is not a regular consumer this might be a business i would actually be really interested in reaching out to them and just seeing if we can become their supplier so just like looking around this is pretty interesting so i did some quick eda and the whole point of this was showing you how to think about exploratory data analysis if this was a real data set i'm pretty sure i would have uncovered a lot more trends probably would have done some summary statistics as well i could look at the date trend as well whether revenue is going up or down if there are any months where we sell a lot of products maybe it's a seasonal product or maybe it's because we're giving discounts you can identify a lot of trends in the eda phase and you should do that it gives you an understanding of your data okay so now that we've explored our data let's just quickly do some cleaning so i know that we looked at some blanks in our data set in the amount column we don't really want any yeses or any blanks because that doesn't really make any sense so we do have some blanks in our data set i'm just going to select all of these and delete the rows because we don't really need them all right so i'm quickly going to check if there are any blanks left it seems like our data is pretty clean now moving over to product because i did identify one duplicate in here i'll just delete this we did note that item a106 and a108 are not exactly duplicates because the prices are different and maybe you can select all columns and then do conditional formatting i just chose to do it this way in customer data we identified some of the customers were duplicates as well so i've removed all the duplicates and now we can move on to the next step i can work with my data set as is or i can create a table and a table just makes it easy to add calculated columns and overall it's just a better experience so what i can do is i'll hit control space um we went over some shortcuts in part one so make sure to check this out command shift and then the right arrow to select the entire column and command t to create a table looking at what i have in the order uh, tab the first thing i want to do is extract the year and month from the date column because i might be interested in monthly or yearly trends so i'll do that in a new column and you'll see that in a table it just automatically adds it as part of the table which is one of the good things instead of working on it as just like the regular range to extract the year i'll look at the year function hit tab close parentheses perfect i'll do the same thing for month equals month the same thing my next step is bringing everything together i want all my data in one place so i can start creating pivot tables and start answering some questions i've made another video where i've talked about how lookups work so i'm just going to go ahead and bring everything in one sheet in the interest of time and keeping the video short but you can check out one of my other videos if you want to go into details on how uh, lookups work okay so i have everything in one sheet i used the product id to grab information about the product and i used the customer id to grab information information about the customers so now because i have everything together i can answer a bunch of questions one thing i want to do is i want to calculate the revenue because i have the unit price and i have the amount i imagine in editing i'm going to zoom this in so i'll just add another column here revenue is amount times unit price enter all right now that we have everything in one place let's start building some pivot tables and you'll see how we can start answering some questions as well now that we have all our information in one place the next thing i want to do is start answering some questions which is going to be through pivot tables so i'll select my data set and insert a pivot table you'll notice that as we start adding variables into the pivot tables we'll start asking more questions and we'll get more clarity as we start playing around with it so if you recall the first question i asked was where should i expand my business and you can pick whichever problem statement you want and play around with that but for this video that is what that is the question that we will be answering so the first thing we want for that is we want to see which countries we are selling our products in so we will bring customer country into the rows and we can see that we are selling in three countries canada uk and us i want to obviously look at the revenue next because where am i selling the most products Twenty-eight thousand five hundred fifty-six dollars 
worth of products were sold in the UK. So UK is clearly our best performing country. I want to see if it's always been like this, if it's consistently higher. So I'll put the year in columns. This looks a lot better. We can see that in the UK, every single year, our products have been outperforming other countries, except for 2025, where Canada won. So this means that in the UK, we had a major dip in sales, but there was an increase in sales in Canada. There could be so many different reasons why that is tariffs could be one reason unemployment could be another reason but clearly this is something that we want to investigate so this is really interesting data because clearly we had a growing trend in canada except for 2024 but it went way high in 2025 so canada has some really good potential in the uk i wouldn't just dismiss it i am interested in which products we sold the most so i'm going to go down and pull the product name under the customer country i'm going to remove the year column and i'll sort my columns in descending order so this is some of revenue descending and i also want to do product name sum of revenue and in descending order so i can see that our foot trust and ergonomic chair were the highest selling products this is some good information but i also want to look at the unit price now this is a clear winner right here the foot trust is a low price product but it's being sold the most and it's generating the highest revenue which clearly means that foot trust in the uk is working really well and this is something that i would want to consider when i'm expanding now that i've determined that uk and canada are are the cities where I could start with the expansion. I'm interested in looking at which city would be the best. If I was expanding in the UK, and obviously revenue is not the only driver that you look at, here we don't have an idea of our cost, so we cannot be calculating the profit, but you have to look at profit margin as well. A place could be generating a lot of revenue, but if your costs are high because of taxes, um, salaries, rent whatever the reason may be and your profit margin is really less you might not want to expand in that city so when i would be thinking of expansion i would look at a lot of different factors before actually expanding my business in that country but obviously revenue profit are the things that you start with and then you start looking at other factors as well because the goal of any business is to make money of course if you have a social impact stuff like that you could be looking at different factors but right now our goal is to make some cash so in a world where i'm expanding my business only because of revenue which again will never happen uh, but if that is the case then looking at the data that we have right now and cleaning it up and bringing it into a pivot chart clearly liverpool is the winner in the uk and um vancouver is the winner in canada so this is where i would start with but this is how pivot tables really help you build those decisions however if we hadn't done the cleaning and the processing of the data first and if we didn't have an idea of what we wanted or the questions that we wanted to get answered then we would be lost right there's so much information and there are so many different questions that can be answered but what are you working on so i really wanted to show you the logic behind answering some questions and the logic behind how you would analyze data i didn't go a lot into the details of how to really dig in just because the goal of this video was to give an idea of how to get started in data analysis and how your brain should be working when you're answering questions you have to think about so many different scenarios it's not just the numbers it's also qualitative data i hope this video was helpful in giving you an understanding of what things look like thank you for your time and i'll see you next time bye